This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC 51, which goes down on September the 29th. We've got Zachary Pinnell getting out there, knuckling up and towing the line against Cody Jenkins, and great getting to have Cody on the show for the first time. How's your day going there, man? You having a solid one so far? Yeah, man, going good. Um, the fight's just uh, 11 days out now, so getting close and... Um, ready to go in and put it on a show, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and entering the ring for your fifth bare-knuckle boxing bout at this point, it just seems like you've really been, you know, taking to this sport. Like, I saw you had, a, you know, some MMA experience to the scale of around, per topology, like 18 fights over Amy and Pro. Like, how's the bare-knuckle boxing journey been, just like I said, readying to, you know, fill up a full hand with the amount of bare-knuckle boxing fights you've had? For sure, man. Yeah, no, I, uh, I really enjoy the bare, bare knuckle side of things, man. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the fights are just action packed the entire time. It it, may, it forces you to kind of be in that firefight, starting on the scratch line, um, and it it makes you fight. Um, whereas you know in MMA, a lot of times you have some holes in the actions and stuff like that. But uh, bare knuckle, man, it's just ex- it's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, and you're very much an exciting fighter to watch within that. I guess I'm kind of curious to ask about this part of it, too, because I'll talk to different fighters who, like, really swear by the different, like, specific, like, hand-strengthening techniques, like working with, like, the wooden Muay Thai boards or, you know, gripping sand and et cetera. But I've heard some fighters who are also just like, ah, whatever, like, I don't do any of that stuff. That doesn't work. Like, where are you at in that kind of binary, I guess? Yeah, but I'm, I'm kind of the guy that doesn't do any of this stuff. Now, I, I won't say it doesn't work. I don't know, but... uh I mean, I've gotten through all my bare knuckle fights, and I've never done none of that, so I don't know. I don't know how much of an advantage it is or disadvantage, but no, I'm, I'm kind of on the standpoint. I mean, I'll, I'll go, um, you know, bare knuckle on the tag sometimes and uh, do a lot of things bare knuckle, but that's more for the timing and the, the little bit of difference that the gloves make where, where you're going to land and things like that. As far as, like, hand conditioning, I, I'm not on that boat, bro. Yeah, no, that's fair. Like I said, I feel like it's like either fighters swear by it or some fighters are just like, ah, you know, that's not for me. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. But I, mean, I, think, I think everybody tries to look for like a little bit of an edge. So, I mean, if somebody told them it was going to help their hands out to put it down in some sand or something, I, I mean, I'd, I'd try it too, but nobody told me that so far, so I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> but I did mention the fact that at least per topology, you have close to 20 MMA fights. I guess I'm curious like how much... I guess, transferable skill from that you can apply to bare knuckle because it seems like the guys who have the MMA base that get into at least like the American like, you know, active clinch oriented style of bare knuckle, it seems like they have a certain skill base that crosses over well. Have you found that? For sure, I do. Um, especially like you were saying, in the, in the clinch and things like that is really where that uh, MMA experience comes in because um, a lot of the guys that like come up from come over from boxing when they you can tell when you grab those guys in the clinch they don't really know what to do and they're looking for some stupid over the top headlock or something to come out of the clinch so just having those um tools in my arsenal for, from the grappling and from the clinch work and mma um definitely helps to like I, mean, I use a clinch if i ever get into a clinch just to kind of shut the action down for a second so i can get a break and get back to space but um, yeah, that definitely transfers over, and then just some of the creativity that MMA strikers have, as opposed to like boxers that are just um, traditional boxers. I think that helps a lot too. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you've got a good like lay of the land in that sense, because I did try to say it in like a broader kind of way, like the more like American active clinch kind of fighting, like just getting the experiences in both that like tighter like BYB mighty trigon, but also like the more spacious like BKFC combative space so it seems like you're getting a lot of good looks for sure yeah i love to see that for sure and then just also talking about like the quality of opposition you face too like it seems like a real like trial by fire 
kind of bare knuckle curve, like fighting guys, like you know. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I always try to take the biggest fights I can. I can take. I mean, I I never shied away from a, from a fight, no matter who it was. You know, so I'm, I'm definitely taking some big names and some some big fights over over my course. Um, so you know, this is no different. I don't, I don't know much about Zach. Um, I'm sure he's a tough kid and everything, but you know, on, on my good nights, man, I can compete with anybody in the world. I really believe that. So I'm ready to go out there and prove it. And you did kind of mention something interesting about, you know, Zach Pinnell there and everything like that. And I kind of also, I guess, found that and trying to do my research on him. Like, it doesn't seem like there's, like, a great deal of information to go off of. Like, obviously making his bare-knuckle debut here. But even checking out, like, you know, Tapology and things of that ilk. It looks like he is, like... Well, he's not going to... I think on Tapology, he comes up as 0-1 because it's the only sanctioned fight he's had. But he's had a... Uh... A lot of, like, the street beef stuff, like the backyard brawls, I guess. Um, oh, okay. He's had, a lot of, he's had a lot of those. So you look him up on YouTube, you can, there's a lot of footage of him on there, um, boxing in the backyard and shit. But, uh, like I said, I don't, know, I don't know that he's ever done what he's coming in to do. I mean, he, they say he has, like, 40 fights um, as far as in street beefs. But, I mean, they're wearing... 14, 16 ounce gloves. If you count that, I mean, I've had a thousand fights. I do that every week. So, do you think that's ultimately going to be the biggest difference maker here? Just like your localized experience and the fact that, like, most of his experience is in a discipline that's a fair bit different than what you're about to do? I, I think so, man. I don't, I don't think he's ever seen. I, I don't think a lot of the guys, at least from what I saw, um, at least in, in my opinion, have the skill set that I have as far as as far as boxing. Um, that Zach, I mean, he looks like he's got some decent tools, but doesn't quite know how to use them that well. Um, I see a lot of openings, and I think it's going to be a good night for me. But that's why it's a fight, man, and it's bare knuckles, so anything can happen. Well, that's interesting because I guess a question that I was going to ask you is like, how much are you like looking at that and trying to like create a certain game plan around it? But it sounds like you very much are because you could easily kind of look at that and be like, oh, it's not really like quite the same thing, or like the guys aren't you know perhaps to quite the same skill level, like not to be disrespectful. But it sounds like you have been formulating a game plan around this guy. So, I mean, yeah, I've been trying to like for for this fight, I had a, a decent camp, at least not, maybe not for the opponent. I found that the opponent kind of short notice again about four weeks out, three weeks out. But I knew I was going to have the date a lot further out than I typically take my fights. I don't know how much, but I mean, like my, all of my bare knuckle fights have been on less than two weeks notice. Um, so with like, with this one, having a little bit more time to prepare and then, um, you know, even having my opponent more than two weeks out, it's, it's been nice. I can, uh, kind of like you said, game plan a little bit rather than just going in there and like, let's get in a fight. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's kind of wild to think that in, like, a lot of these, like, you know, previous fights, like, fighting, you know, title contenders like Joshua Oxendine or, like, surging fighters like Keith Richardson, it's like you're not generally getting, like, you know, that much time to specifically game plan. So it just really shows your gamesmanship. And I guess as an extension of that, glad you have that game plan opportunity here. For sure, yes, sir. For sure, man. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I fought Josh on 12 days. I fought Keith on two days. Um, my first bare, bare knuckle fight was actually scheduled to be a 135 fight, and I got changed up on me to a 155er on nine days. And then I think I fought Quentin Foy in ABKFC. I was supposed to fight Glendale Berserker and fought Quentin on the week of the fight. So, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> it's nice to have a few weeks to prepare for somebody, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you love to, you know, see that opportunity. But just in mentioning, like, you know, Joshua Ox and Dime there, I guess I'm kind of curious to get your thoughts on, I mean, it's I guess it's a bit of a two-parter, ultimately, but I mentioned he contended for that BYB title. Like, what were your thoughts on that, you know, initial Mark Irwin fight? And I guess that's, like, the second part. Like, what do you see in that, like, rematch between those two that's coming up? Uh, for sure, yeah. I mean, I, I think Josh, uh, from what I saw of the fight, did pretty well in his title fight against um, Mark. Um, so, and like I said, I mean, I, I know the level I'm at. Um, so, it's, you know, on a different night, I believe I beat Josh that night. Um, I was winning the whole fight and then kind of checked myself out of it. But that's 
you know, that's my battles. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it, it makes me feel good to know that I can get in there and compete with the guys that are, like you said, fighting for this belt. Um, Keith is about to fight for the belt in October. Um, so yeah, I mean, it makes me feel good. I know, like I said, I know the level that I'm at and that I just gotta, I gotta get a win. I gotta, I gotta get a win and, uh, start to prove it. So. And I mean, what would that moment represent to you? Because I mean, you've obviously been in there with, you know, really elite guys and, you know, doing so on short notice, just really showing that gamesmanship. Like what would, I guess, getting that first bare knuckle boxing victory represent to you? I think it would be a big moment in your combat sports career. For sure, man. I think it'd be huge. Um, it, it would, it would mean a lot to me. I'm putting a lot of work and time into this. Um, like I said, I mean, I've, I've, fighting is what I love, man. So it's, it's just pick up that win and then get some momentum going. And, uh, they know I'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. Like for real, I'm, I'm one of them guys that actually will do that. So, um, I think pick up a dub and, and start getting on the right track, man. So, yeah, for sure. Definitely would be, you know, a big moment and everything like that. And just, yeah, an intriguing featherweight fight in a lot of different regards for sure, man. And, I mean, I guess just talking about that, yeah. Yeah, no, I guess I would... I was planning on, I was planning on calling you know, Quentin Foyer out for our third fight, man, because me and him is always going to be a good fight, fight of the night every time. Um, I got a win over him in professional MMA. He got the, the in my eyes, not so great judges call in the BKFC fights. So I was going to call him out, but he lost his last fight, so... Uh, I don't know. We'll have something up our sleeve, though, I'm sure. Oh, like you have maybe someone in mind to call out for your post-fight interview? Yeah, I was going to call Foyer out, man, because, like I said, we're one and one now, and uh, me and his fight's always going to be good. I don't know if you saw our fight back in March. We were on the pro oh, yeah. of that card, but had we been on the main card, fight of the night all day. So, And it'll always be like that with me and him, I, I believe. Yeah, and kind of similar to like yourself and Josh Ox and Dime, just in the sense that you have that history fighting in both MMA and bare knuckle. So that's another fight that would be intriguing to see down the line. Sure, man, I'd, I'd love that fight again. <laughs> it just shows, like, I mean, how much combat sports is timing, though. I mean, he could get like an impressive rebound victory if you get a victory here. I mean, who's to say that's not the next one? You know? For sure, man. Yeah, he's got to come over to BKFC, but. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. A lot of variables and just, I mean, illustrates that it's a great landscape for, you know, bare knuckle fighters to have a lot of, you know, different places to go and ply their trade. So, you know, definitely, oh, yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's, it's going to continue to grow and continue to be more competitive, continue to be more guys um, that are that are getting in there. I, I know a lot, of, a lot more MMA guys that are starting to make the jump over and uh, I love it, man. The more people that we got to compete with that different weight classes i mean I, I can go to 35 45 so that just means it's going to be easier for me to get fights you know and that's that's what i'm about so <laughs> and it seems like when you were talking about you know this next coming fight against zachary pinnell it seemed like you were eyeballing a finish I, I talked to certain fighters who have like a particular visualization of how their fights will go and kind of within that there's like a certain time in the fight and a way that it ends in their visualizations. Are you a fighter that's, I guess, kind of prone to doing that? And if so, like, how do you see this one wrapping up? I guess. Uh, man, yeah, I mean, I, I, I try to do all that. Um, honestly, with this fight, again, I've had a lot more time to prepare, so I, I have, um, I had a lot of time to think about that. And yeah, I mean, I honestly, I feel like I'm going to put him down with the with the right hand. I think I'm going to counter his left. I think he likes to leap in a lot with his with a big left hand. He'll high guard come in and try to throw something sloppy um but no one i've seen that's far them really counters they just kind of wait and then try to throw again that's my counter right there so um if i had to guess it's gonna be a right hand man maybe round two well i mean i was definitely excited for this fight before talking to you but all the insights definitely getting me more fired up man but in saying all that definitely want to be you know mindful of your time and schedule cody so in saying that is there maybe like a final parting thought you'd want to add as we're wrapping things up here man uh no just want to shout everybody out i appreciate everybody that checks in tunes into the fight comes out to support um as always i'd like to give a shout out if i can to my sponsors the e-tool nation downright supplements saffron sales 
Um, all these guys, Ugly Bishops Boxing, all these guys helped me so much throughout camp and, and with the fight, man. And uh, couldn't be more proud to go represent them here in 11 days. Yeah, well, you always bring it and very much excited to see this next fight with Zachary Pinnell and just a great event with BKFC 51 coming up and this fight fits very nicely within all the fistic fireworks we're looking at for September 29th there. So to reiterate, thanks for making the time and coming on the show, man. And yeah, looking forward to checking out the fight, no doubt. But until then, you have a good rest of your day, Cody. Thank you. All right, man. You too. Thanks for having me on and I'll talk to you hopefully after the fight, huh? Yeah, I have a feeling we'll uh, be setting up some subsequent chats in the future since I finally yes. got you on, yeah. Yes, sir. For sure, man. All right, brother. Well, have a good day, man. Thank you. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on. $50 buys.